There you see our defending champion himself, Orlan Wamar Jr. There you see our past winners. be breaking down our mechanics for the three-point shootout. Uh, for this year's edition, we will have two preliminary rounds in one final round. Participants will have 60 seconds to shoot all the balls per round. Top six scores will advance to our second round. And the top three scores after the second round will advance to our finals. The top scorer will emerge as the champion of our 2024 three-point shootout. Our three-point shootout. He's one of the three guys who averaged more of a set shot as preferred by Kurt Rayson. This is usually the favorite spot of most shooters. For my conversations with some MPBL players in the past couple of years, the ring is different here in Zamboanga in terms of height, in terms of yung awa na binibigay niya sa ating mga shooter. And so it's going to be a tough, tough challenge. His best three-point shooting performance versus Bulacan, making five in the regular season now. He's going to end up with eight points in round number one. Good rhythm in terms of releasing the basketball. It's the conversions that haven't really come around para kay Kurt Rayson during that first round. That was his best rack, that left wing. It's also his money most. ball rack. Yep. Kurt Rayson ends up with eight points of the MPBL, the San Juan Knights. And those are just really staggering numbers para kay Isi Soberano. And he just keeps also not off to the best of starts, but he can get it going. It seems like he's heating up. That left wing so far has been the best friend of Rayson and Soberano for our first two shooters. He's up to 10 points so far, already surpassing the output of Kirk Rayson. Soberano, again, getting his rhythm. 14 points for AC and counting. Oh, he's feeling it. One more shot. This is for 18 points. And yes, he will finish with that magic number. Get his best so far in that left wing. Struggled during the middle rack, his money ball rack. But then able to finish strong in the last two racks. There you see AC Soberano getting most of his points. That's 18 in total for AC Soberano. Now we proceed to the guy who averages 18 points per game in Ryan Sual. This man actually makes four three-pointers per game for Coach John Kalios at a 36% clip. That's number one for the Marlins. And just He's had one game where he hit seven three-pointers and six other game balls. It doesn't really have He's got that muscle Mary, my Mary going. Let's see how he finishes this. Definitely not gonna be able to tie AC Soberano anymore. So that's 15 points of St. Clair, his college head coach. So again, this is gonna be a long competition. The top six will advance to the next round and then we proceed to the top three. So far, Ryan Swal is number two behind AC Soberano. Efficiency at 41% in Axel Inigo. Pangasinan and Val City, respectively. Axel trying to catch his groove. This round, only two points so far for Axel Inigo. I Actually, wonder uh, how his brother Achi is feeling. I'm sure he's watching right now. Up to six. One more try. And that's it. Not the best of performances for Axel Inigo. I do actually think that he shares the similar stroke with his brother, no? At a 35% clip from downtown. So that's third for Batang Kankalu behind Joel Liu and Prince Kasin. I like how you really looked at me when you said Joel Liu having a good percentage from the outside. Jennifer Kabanek actually hit the season high. Five three-pointers. The next game, after he was announced to be a part of our three-point shootout, he... a lot of people have their money on Jennifer Kabanek to win this competition tonight. Try to make some milongos and reacting with much animation at the sideline. Jennifer Kabanek now increasing his tally to try to finish. Uh, but he... Or he actually releases. For the Abro Weavers, he hits seven threes each versus Bacolod and Bulacan for his season high. Normally, that company. Oh, it's important. Magkagarating ng mga later racks as well. Nino Comboy now up to five points. 
He's up to five points so far. This is his money rack. One last push. Last ball for Enoch Homeboy to reach double figures. But he will actually finish with 10 points with a prior pick. Ever since in high school, that has been his favorite spot. But in Choi Ignacio. Also in our All-Star game. Three threes versus the Burkina Shoe Masters. Three-point shooter. But he only attempts one per game. Obviously, the volume goes to Yaz's money rack. In other shootouts, to have their money ball racks from top of the circle. Ignacio. Looks on to the crowd, end to the time. With 10 points. Now this is JJ Jessalem from Quezon City. Relies more on those pulse. Just like Ryan Swal. Yeah. They have a similar stroke. JJ is the number one three-point shooter of Quezon City. Shoots to have his money ball rack for his last rack. One last ball, Jessalem. Because of that speed, he was quite bothered by it. One of the best scorers in MBBL history, and risers. The season high is five. This is a guy who has always been a part of the top ten in scoring in MBBL history. But this season, it's quite different for him. Average double figures, but not enough to be a part of our prestigious group. You can see uh, somehow a loss of power on the shot. Farah Ives has on, on the last rack. Last three balls for Ives. He will lose time. 12 points, 12 points not bad. Yeah. A guy who's capable of, capable of scoring 20 points in half, two times. Again, Zamboanga in the rack. Up beside the rack, how quick he could get to the rack, and how quick he could get to the first ball. He's gonna have to play it fast. Last second. That would be his last shot. So that's seven points in total for. Small forward Val City. Good points for Dennis Santos. Not show you much of his three point prowess in terms of makes per game. He doesn't even average in terms of his performance in the three point shootout. A shaky start here, but I don't mark Matiliano. Mark, but I don't know which takes some time. Now this is where he actually shoots the most from in the season, the corner for the Huskers. Try to finish strong. Matiliano. We'll have seven points. Aside from the fact that he's already got the ball. Now this guy has a push shot. Orlan Momar, our defending champion in the three-point shootout. Has even gotten better. Whether it's coming off the bench or starting games, he has proven or what. Para sa kapunan ni Senator Ram. Including an air ball. Which is very uncharacteristic. But he did go for this competition. He would usually shoot from way out. Mar is nearing double figures, and now he's at his money rack. This player of San Juan, when they defeated the Pampanga Giant Lanterns to claim the number one seed in the North Division and the entire MPBL. Well, he has a chance to uh, end up with the highest score in this round. Topple AC Soberano. He's developed a good rhythm here on the last two racks. One last. And so, let's take a look at what happened there. Corner rack para kay Orlan Omar, getting those shots to go, making sure that he does have a high chance to enter the next round. Again, we will have the top six scorers after the first round advance to our second round. And after that, it's going to be the top three. Orlan Omar will be safe alongside his buddy in AC Soberano. So here we have the tally for round number one. And so we'll need to have a shootout for these players, Ino Pomboy, Choi Ignacio, and JJ Jessalem. Again, it's a 30-second shootout here for these three players, Jessalem, Ignacio, and Pomboy. Only one conversion so far. Running out, 10 seconds to go for JJ. Last three seconds. Just to finish this rack. So that's going to be a total of... Fair in this tiebreaker. Awaiting the second shooter here in our tiebreaker. Try to make me... He's watching. Last second. Last shot. I would suggest for Choi Ignacio is to put his money ball rack here. Now as one of the veterans of Zamboanga. That's his second make. Oh, that 
that's it. He's gonna fall short. It was four a while ago. Upon JJ just a limp, but uh, it seems like we're just clarifying something at the sideline. We will proceed with the best Sazon. So this is back participants who will play. So far, it's been working here. Good rack for him here in the center rack. So 10 points for Ives Sazon. One last rack for him. Yeah, he has already surpassed here. Yeah. his round one output. Sazon, this is a pretty high score. Short on his last ball. So now... Here in this shootout. franchise has given us a big push in order to raise itself in the standings. One last second, one last shot, and just a limb. There are a lot of factors that you have to uh, play into. It's Jeremy Kabanek now proceeds. It's a reset for our top six shooters in round number one. For shooting his second ball here in the second rack. Jeremy miss his mind always looking forward to the next shot no matter how bad you miss in round number two he's an averaging 12 three-point attempts per outing and check out that spin on the basketball huh that has always been present for him definitely agree with that coach John Kalia is cheering him on from the baseline Racks to go. It still has a lot of time on the clock. Oh, he's feeling it. But Ryan Sewal has the opportunity to get above the average here on this round. He actually shoots rather fast. I think that's pretty decent score to get into the finals. Senator Jingoy Estrada and company. And that's not something that we're really used to coming from AC Soberano. That's why derecho, derecho lang, whether it's a miss or His release and his timing. Up to eight points so far. So Verano trying to reach double figures. He's gonna have to rush a bit on this last trap. Two more shots. This is still a good score for him. He will end up with 15. He wants to be the first one to achieve so. Here we go, with our defending champ, as he has always been, for two points in the opening rack. After you follow through, you think you're the next ball. Eh? Should it be affected by the outcome of the previous shot you took? Because that's going to mess with your mind more. Some mental toughness here. If shots starting to miss, para kay Wamar. I might have spoken too oh, soon, though. Yeah, it was too soon. Yes, time. One more to get to 17. And that bounces out for Orlan Momar Jr. He is an official 15 for Orlan Momar Jr. After that right wing rack starting to get to Orlan Momar. Brian Sual is number one with 16 and then there's a three-way tie. So we're gonna have another 30 second shootout final. Make the most out of 30 seconds given to them. Soberano with a couple of conversions in the opening rack. Oh, he's feeling it. Upper AC Soberano. to lose some power there. Each double figures. This is a good score. 11 points in 30 seconds. 11 points for AC Soberano. And he's had a lot to do with that. And that chance. Money ball rack. There's a conversion. For it's a long way to go. And there would be pressure to our defending champion later on. Ives Sazon, not the best of scores. Five points. Ready with one, now with two, now with three. Five points already. This the warm-up for the final. All right, there you go. 
Orlan Bomar Jr. is now in the final alongside AC Soberano and Ryan Sual. This is just for momentum for himself. Last two shots. He actually has the best score in the tiebreaker. It was a good start for Orlan Bomar here in the tiebreaker round, establishing that momentum from that right corner, moving on to because this puts more momentum on his side because of the sh shots that he made in this tiebreaker. That's his first. Remember, this is the final. This has to be your best performance. Uh, many people say it might not be how you started, but if you finish strong, you're going to be able to... So he converted with three money balls, so now he's up to eight points, now up to nine. One last rack. He's in double figures with 12. He has to get some power from his legs. 14 points so far. One last try. Might be feeling a little bit more confident. Time in MBBL history tonight. The score to beat is 14. Yeah, there are some players who would really off to a good start. Up to 7. 8. Nine. Oh, he's feeling it. 11 points now for Orlan Mamar. Will it be back to back? For there will be 16 here in the final. 15 points so far. Oh, he's looking good. 16. 16 points. Yes, and with a jacket on for him. The first shot was an air ball, but the second was nothing but net. He overshot that last money ball. Now on for Ryan Sual. He has eight points so far. Nine. Ten points. You gotta go five out oh, of five. That's, that's, it. that's it. It's history tonight in Zamboanga City. One last shot for Ryan Sual. For the first time in MPBL history, we have a back-to-back three-point shootout champion. He literally shot the ball, lights out here in Zamboanga, Orlan Mamar Jr. Orlan Mamar celebrating as he recaptures the crown this year. A good curtain raiser for what could be an MVP-like performance for him in the All-Star game later. As he outlasts AC Soberano by two points and Ryan Sual by four points. And now, the trophy will be presented to our three-point king for the second straight year in the MPBL. It's, last year, Habib, we had this nice narrative for Balti Baltazar winning all three MVP awards and the championship. What if Orlan can achieve something like that this season? You did mention he might actually translate the shooting prowess onto later on our All-Star game. And for him to do it in a season filled with giants.